Hello, in this short video I'll be talking about how to create this disintegration sort of explosion effect at the back of this guy's head. There are three main effects, uh, here's the video. So going over the basics, this animation has um, a total of three different effects to create the sort of explosion disintegration effect at the back of this um, character, uh, the back of the head. So I'm going to go over these uh, three effects. Um, also, the models um, are basically taken from Sketchfab and the armor for this body is um, hand modeled by me a long time ago. Anyway, so towards the effects, I'm going to start with effect 1, so let me just remove all of these. So this effect 1 is basically some sort of like particle disintegration effect. So there's a video I created a couple of weeks ago which has this entire face full of these particles. So if I click play here, you can see that... Uh, oh, actually, let me just remove these other particles here. Um, so if I click play here, we can see that we have a, f a distribution of points at the back of the head and then certain areas are moved, uh, displaced. And then while they're being displaced, they kind of move in this like uh, most grave uh, noise texture. So that's pretty good. Um, it's very, very interesting effect, especially if you have the entire face filled it with it. So I have an animation on the screen, which is the one I uh, created using this sort of effect. To significantly improve this uh, sort of um, simulation, you probably just want to distribute more points, but by doing so, you're your file will be much more laggy in a way because there's more points, more faces to render and all that stuff. So going over the effect, it's a basically a geometry node, a simulation node. So here it is. So I won't go over it because I'm not really the one that created this. I have very little knowledge of how this works. Uh, but basically I'm going to go over this and you can just copy and paste it. I have a couple links down in the description. Uh, which are like the videos which I which I used to create this sort of uh, thing. So this is a combination of multiple different video tutorials and then So that's this effect. It's very handy. It's not really like a must-have thing. Uh, if you don't want to do this geometry node thing, you could probably just use a particle and just uh, just a particle simulation. But the difference is is that you won't be able to like simulate certain areas uh, simulating, for example. So that's that. Cool. So now I'm going to remove this and do the second effect. So this one is basically like a clot disintegration um, sort of thing. So if I click play here real quick, this is what we have. And this is very, very nice and looks pretty good. Um, so there's um, multiple ways to create this, I think. Uh, but on the internet, if you look, if you search up clot disintegration, there's going to be multiple videos uh, showing how this works. And it's very handy. Um, so I'm going to go over what I did. So I have a link in the description, the video which I used. Um, but I'll basically have to create a particle uh, system. You have to follow the settings, which I have on the right side of the screen. I use modify stack as one of the important ones. Uh, make sure for render you have none. And field weights, I don't know if that's important or not. Sometimes force fields don't really work with uh, with the sort of claw effect, uh, I don't sure why. And I think that's basically all you have to do. You then have to you add the explode modifier. Don't press anything here. I don't think it was vertex weight uh, proximity is kind of important. Uh, have smooth, and then target object have this like an empty. I think this is the empty here that I have. And then you might want to click on the object you're trying to disintegrate, and click on weight paint. Now this looks a bit crazy, but basically if I click play, you'll be able to see that as the empty comes closer to the face, there's going to be certain areas that are going to start hiding. Now the way, the reason it looks kind of messed up is um, I have zero clue why it looks like that. I think it's because I baked it and it doesn't like it when I mess around with it. But one key things you want to play around with this uh, modifier is the lowest and highest volume. Uh, so play around with that and that should be alright. Now the final thing is the clot sim itself. Now I don't think there's anything specific here other than the fact that you have to pin uh, all of these faces together. So that when you play the animation the clot doesn't just instantly go down on the ground. So. Uh, so there you go, if you go to the sh uh, within the cloth sim, 
go to shape, you can have this pin group. Now to pin things, you basically uh, select every single vertices. I think it has to be vertices, no faces. You then go over to this section, this Illuminati triangle green data thing. You create, you press this uh, plus button, and then you have this group thing. Then click assign. Make sure you click assign though, because otherwise it's just not gonna work. Then go to particle sim, um, not particle sim, cloud sim, and then find this group that you created and put it there, and that should work. And then if you keyframe, if your keyframe is empty, which you targeted initially, um, it should be able to. Once it comes close, the call effect will happen, which is nice, very nice. Okay, so this final effect, I uh, just keep saving and it takes a while, I don't know why. So for this final effect, it's basically uh, RBD Lab uh, Fracture. So I use an island called RBD Labs, it's very, very good, I've been using it for quite some time, and I basically decided to create this like... Um, Explosion using it uh, just to add some extra detail, more like extra 3D geometry detail because you have this cloud sim, then the particle is more like 2D, it's kind of flat, not much volume into it. So I decided to add this sort of 3D effect. Now, it is possible to create this using just um, the self fracture add on. Um, I think it's called self fracture, right? Yeah, the self fracture is not an add on, it's a quick effect, um, which is free and comes with Blender, which is pretty good. Oh, shit. So, self fracture is pretty good. Um, so, if you want to do this for free, you can do, use self fracture. Um, but I haven't used it for a long time, so I can't really give you any hints on how to use it. But if you're going to be using RBD Labs, you'll be able to create these extra particles, which, you, which is called debris within the add on. Uh, also dust and what how it works is basically you can see the particles emitting from the fractured pieces and you can actually adjust them um, like you can change the parameters uh, pretty pretty good like there's a lot of science you can change uh, so that's also pretty good you can also like change the shader for them for example if I go here you can see I made them so they make golden particles you can change the scale movement and have certain force field parameters for them so that's basically all of the effects. Now if I just combine them all together, you'll have this. Which is pretty good in a sense. And I think that's pretty much it for this entire animation scene. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this sort of animation. So yeah, if you want to recreate this, then good luck. But most of the information I just told you uh, should be a good starter point for you guys. So thank you for watching and yeah.